So I don't know that the organizers knew this, but I actually did live uh, in the Netherlands for six years. So for me, this, it's a thrill to be here. It's a very much like a homecoming. Uh, the boy left uh, Den Haag at the age of six, but I can tell you from first-hand experience that the memories are still with me. So it's great to be back, and I won't take any more of that time, but uh, a lot of stories there that I welcome the chance to share with you. So uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about this iconic tech battle cry, because that's really what it is. We've seen it all, and we know very much what it's about, which is the idea or the concept of thinking differently. But when we change the logo, it changes everything. And it reminds me a little bit of an advertising campaign that ran in the US about 10 years ago from a company called Dow Chemical. And the ad campaign was really around uh, a different element in healthcare, which is the human element. And it used a very uh, high gloss, high touch approach in introducing the concept of the human element. For each of us, there's a moment of discovery. And in that moment, we learn that all of life is elemental. Sodium bonding with chloride, hydrogen bonding with oxygen. But the missing element on the chart is often the human element. So when I'm looking for stories or when I'm writing stories in the healthcare space, for me, that's the element that I look for in trying to find and, and bring to life the, the stories that, that really resonate with the human element. So I wanted to share four of those in fairly quick succession. So the first is Lloyd Dean, and uh, Lloyd is actually the CEO of Dignity Health in San Francisco, California. And uh, his great story, he's personal friends with Barack Obama. Um, he joined Dignity Health in 2000 at a time when the hospital chain, which is one of the largest in the country, I think it's currently the sixth largest not-for-profit hospital chain in the U.S. He joined in 2000 when the chain was losing literally a million dollars a day. And today, he's done a complete turnaround, and it's now generating, in effect, a net, a net profit of a million a day. So very effective turnaround, and an amazing man that I had a chance to interview for Forbes in a piece that I wrote last year. And I got to the typical questions that any journalist might ask relative to Obamacare and the Affordable Care Act and sort of what his views of those things were. And the last question that I asked was, what's the most exciting and innovative thing that he's seen in the last three years? And what he recounted to me was pretty amazing because what he said was the, the most innovative thing that he had seen was th the healing power of human kindness. And that wasn't anything I was expecting because remember, this is, he's, he lives in the Bay Area. Dignity Health is based in San Francisco. So I was fully expecting this, this long story on some new technology that, um, you know, that was sweeping and helping him convert uh, a, a, a failing institution into one that was succeeding. But it was really human kindness, and they've worked closely with uh, Stanford University Medical Center to actually get to the heart of what the statistics are uh, relative to engaging patients with kindness. And the fact is it reduces stress, it reduces anxiety, it reduces blood pressure. You get faster uh, healing wounds, and it also reduces actual uh, hospital stays. So very compelling in the sense of um, what human kindness brings to the healthcare ecosystem. And today, Dignity Health actually runs a charity event every year, and they actually held their uh, annual event uh, last week, which is called the Human Kindness Gala. It's a charity event. All the proceeds go to fund three separate projects under Dignity Health, and this year's three projects are human trafficking, uh, concussion education, and postpartum de depression. So a great example for me of the element of, the human element uh, being brought into the healthcare space. So John Kitzhaber is another example, and his story is that his formal training initially was as an emergency room doc 
and that's not uncommon for a lot of politicians in the U.S., is to actually have training, formal training, as a doc. He went on to become um, the longest-running governor for the state of Oregon. But in the sense of the healthcare space, what he became famous for is now what's known as the air conditioner story. And it's a great story because it talks about technology in a slightly different way with the human element. So in our system, uh, we don't have universal health coverage until you're age 65. At age 65 and above, it's called Medicare. And the way the air conditioner story goes is this. Our system of Medicare is perfectly content to pay forty to $45,000 for an emergency cardiac event for an 80-year-old lady who's in an apartment. The reality is that in order to prevent that cardiac event and in order to save forty to $45,000, what she really needs is a $200 window air conditioner to prevent the cardiac event from happening. So the point and the message behind that is that technology comes in all shapes and sizes. And some of it's very low cost, and some of it's very easy to use. And so we, we, li we like that story relative to thinking different and applying the human element to uh, our healthcare. So her own needs no introductions. <laughs> Is he here, by chance? Um, so I happened to meet him at CES uh, in January, of not this last January, but the January before. And while I've known Peter Fine, who's another CEO of a large hospital chain, this one happens to be in my home state of Arizona, uh, he, he introduced me to the concept of the technology partnership that Philips has brought to Banner Healthcare. And the technology partnership is key, but it's Banner that has added in the element of a care team. And that care team, combined with the technology in telehealth, has resulted in phenomenal savings on the order of 27% lower costs overall, 32% lower costs in acute care, and 45% reduction in uh, hospitalizations. So amazing story relative to the implication and the application of technology, but with the care teams behind it, which include health coaches, nurses, uh, pharmacists, and others as a part of the actual care team delivering this uh, remotely. The, the, the final one is Stan Brock. And Stan Brock was actually born in the UK, but he spends most of his time in the US uh, after the UK, he grew up pretty much in the Amazon jungle. And this is where um, he learned a lot about healthcare from the vantage point of, of not having access to it. So as he grew up, he wrote uh, two books. He starred in two movies. He was the uh, uh, He was the co-host of a television series from 1966 to 1973, and it was called Wild Kingdom. And so in a lot of ways, Stan represents what we know as Indiana Jones, because he grew up in the jungle. He grew up in South America. And one of his, uh, a lot of his traits, he's a bush pilot, he's a taekwondo black belt. Again, he's written two books, starred in two movies, a co-host. So at the age of 80, he decided that a great idea would be at to, to bring his bush pilot training to healthcare in a way to deliver healthcare to remote parts of the world. And what it turns out happening is that those remote parts of the world wound up being in the United States. And 60% of the activity that remote area medical does today is right in the United States, delivering free healthcare to people who drive for miles, camp overnight, and then stand in line for access to this kind of health care. And sometimes it's held in sports stadiums, sometimes it's held in high school gymnasiums. Most of it's dental and vision, but it's the human element coming to bear. And these are the, uh, it's tempting to think that Obamacare has solved this, but these are the list of the clinics that the remote area medical will be, will be delivering for the balance of the year. But these are the real human uh, elements in the sense of the doctors and the nurses that donate their time as a part of the charity that delivers this care to Americans who can't afford uh, some of the basic elements of care 
that we desperately need. So one more thing, and then a final wrap. But I'm often asked as a writer what the road ahead looks like for uh, the American healthcare system on the basis of having written a book. This isn't a plug for the book, but um, I often quote the Israeli politician Abba Eben, and the quote is sometimes attributed to Winston Churchill, but it was actually Abba Eben who said, Americans can be counted on to do the right thing, but only after they've tried everything else. And that's where we are today. We're still trying a lot of other things. And, but we are making progress, and I do see hope for the road ahead. But it is the human element that we need in the sense of bringing that uh, to our thinking in technology innovation for healthcare. And again, thank you very much for inviting me today.